Have you ever wondered how Charlie Munga, the billionaire investor and business partner of Warren Buffett, made his first million? Munga's path to financial success was not without its ups and downs, but through hard work, smart investment, and a willingness to take calculated risks, he was able to build a significant fortune. From his early days as a lawyer and real estate investor to his later success at Berkshire Hathaway, Munga has consistently demonstrated an ability to identify and capitalize on opportunities that have helped him achieve financial success. So, how did Charlie Munga make his first million? Watch to the end to find out the fascinating story behind his journey to becoming one of the most successful investors in history. It is often said that the first million is the hardest to earn. Many people are curious about how successful business people and investors made their first major financial gains. Recently, I have been reading the biography of Charlie Munger, damn right, behind the scenes with Berkshire Hathaway billionaire Charlie Munger, written by Janet Lowe. This book includes a chapter that specifically covers how Munger made his first million. While the early investments of Warren Buffett are well known, the details of Munger's financial beginnings are not as widely understood. The book offers insight into Munger's path to success and how he was able to achieve his first major financial milestone. Before I forget, this is a finance, investment, and personal finance channel for you. So please hit the subscribe and like button as we get going. Thank you. Munga's Late Start Charlie Munga was born on January 1, 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska. He received his undergraduate education at the University of Michigan, where he studied from 1941 to 1942. After a year of study, Munga joined the U.S. Army and served as a meteorological officer in the Air Force. During his time in the Army, he had the opportunity to attend Caltech in Pasadena, California, where he developed a love for the state. In 1948, Munga graduated from Harvard Law School and moved to California to begin his career as a lawyer. After establishing his law practice, Munga began investing in real estate and stocks. In the 1950s, he formed a partnership with another lawyer, and the two of them began investing in various securities. Over time, Munga's investments and business ventures contributed to his financial success, and helped him build his fortune. Charlie Munga experienced a significant financial setback at the age of around 30 when he and his first wife divorced. As a result of the divorce, Munga lost most of his wealth and had to start over. Despite this setback, Munga was determined to rebuild his financial success and continued to pursue various business and investment opportunities. After the divorce, Munga remarried at the age of 32 and had eight children from his two marriages. Despite the challenges he has faced, Munga has been able to achieve significant financial success and is widely regarded as one of the most successful investors in history. In the late 1950s, Charlie Munga met Otis Booth through his law practice and the two became good friends. In 1961, Booth approached Munga for help with a probate settlement and Munga advised him to keep the property and develop it. Booth asked Munga to join him in the project, and Munga agreed. The two men decided to split ownership of the property evenly, with each of them holding a 50% stake. They developed apartments adjacent to Caltech and completed the project in 1967. When they sold the property, they made a profit of 400%, turning their initial investment of $100,000 each into $500,000 each. This successful real estate venture was an early example of Munga's ability to identify and capitalize on lucrative investment opportunities. From their successful real estate project near Caltech, Charlie Munga and Otis Booth learned that ground floor apartments sold quickly and at a premium price. Based on this insight, they decided to make their next project a single-story building with higher-priced units. These single-level condos sold quickly, even at a higher price point, and the partners continued to use this floor plan for their third, fourth, and fifth projects. Despite fluctuations in the real estate market, these units were profitable ventures for Munga and Booth. Munga attributed their success to the attention they paid to the landscaping, stating, lush landscaping. That is what sells. You spend money on trees, and you get back triple. In other words, investing in attractive landscaping can lead to significant returns on investment in the real estate market. Charlie Munga's real estate ventures were a significant source of his financial success and helped him build his fortune. As he recalled, when it was over, I had $1.4 million as the result of my real estate involvement. That was a lot of money at that time. I did a total of five projects, then stopped. This occurred in the mid 1960s, when Munga was in his early 40s. Around this time, he had also met Warren Buffett, who would later become his business partner at Berkshire Hathaway. Munga's real estate investments and his relationship with Buffett were major milestones in his career and contributed to his later success as an investor. So let's rewind a little bit. What is the main message here? Throughout his career, 
Charlie Munga has worked hard and dedicated himself to his various professional endeavors, including his legal practice. Through his work as a lawyer, Munga gradually accumulated money that he used to invest in security and join friends and clients in business ventures. One of his first major business endeavors was with a colleague named Ed Hoskins in a company called Transformer Engineers, which manufactured transformers. However, the business struggled after the Korean War ended and faced financial challenges. In later years, Munger reflected on this experience, saying, that was a bad business when the war was over. It was a lot of struggle, a lot of nerve pain. We damn near lost everything. We finally made it work out, but not fabulously. But we got a very respectable return on investment eventually. Despite the difficulties he faced, Munga persevered and eventually achieved a satisfactory return on his investment in the business. This experience likely helped shape his approach to investing and business and contributed to his later successes. The transformer business that Charlie Munga was involved in early in his career was a valuable learning experience for him and it helped shape his investing philosophy. He later used this philosophy to influence Warren Buffett, who became his business partner at Berkshire Hathaway. Munga learned that it is not enjoyable or profitable to invest in a company that is likely to go bankrupt in the near future, saying, it is not much fun to buy a company that you hope liquidates at a profit just before it is destined to go broke. He also developed a clear understanding of what constitutes a good business, stating, the difference between a good business and a bad business is that good businesses throw up one easy decision after another. The bad businesses throw up painful decisions time after time. These lessons from his early business experiences have likely played a significant role in Munga's success as an investor. Charlie Munga has always had a strong interest in financial success and the independence that it can bring. In his own words, like Warren, I had a considerable passion to get rich. Not because I wanted Ferraris, I wanted the independence. I desperately wanted it. Munga's desire for financial independence has driven him to pursue various business and investment opportunities throughout his career. These efforts have contributed to his success as an investor and have helped him build a significant fortune. Despite his financial success, Munga has also emphasized the importance of using wealth responsibly and for the benefit of others. He has said, the only thing that works is to get rich and give it away. Small beginnings. While it is certainly interesting to examine the high-level, complex investment decisions made by successful individuals like Warren Buffett, and Charlie Munger. It is important to remember that the average investor is unlikely to have the same level of capital or resources at their disposal. In this sense, it might be more practical for individual investors to study the strategies and thought processes that Buffett and Munger used to build their initial wealth, rather than trying to replicate their later, more complex investment moves. By analyzing how these successful investors made their first million, individual investors can potentially gain valuable insights and ideas that they can apply to their own investment journey. In this way, the early investment decisions of successful individuals like Buffett and Munga can be highly informative and relevant to the average investor, even if they are not in a position to make similarly large or complex investments. Above all, please subscribe to my channel and like the video for the algorithm. Meanwhile click the video popping up in your screen. See you there.